Right now I'm in South Africa, where a number of skeletons of supposed ape-like ancestors were discovered. And yet, if the Bible is true, then nearly the entire human population would have been wiped out a few thousand years ago. The catastrophic flood of Noah's day ended up burying almost every living thing at the time. That would have included the human population living in the 2300s BC. Obviously, except for the eight people on the ark. So where are all of the human skeletons? There's no doubt that we find a ton of marine fossils almost everywhere we look, whether it's crinoids in my backyard of Tennessee or coral on the tallest mountains of the world. There's clearly been a lot of water in Earth's past. And then we go to places like Colorado or Germany or Argentina, and we find these giant dinosaurs encased in rock. We found land mammals buried in the exposed rock layers of Texas and California, as well as many other places. But then we get to humans. We've got a few garbage bags full of bones total for all of the humans that seem to have existed more than 4,000 years ago. Even if you include all of the bones from all of the ape-like creatures, supposedly, that anthropologists say evolved into humans, that doesn't add many specimens. So let's just think about how this works. When the fountains of the Great Deep broke open, it would have stirred up mud and sent waves of sloshy sediment across continents. The first thing to get buried would have been the sea creatures in the pre-flood oceans becoming trapped in the mud. Like I said, we find plenty of those, like the giant Leviathan. But next, the waves of sediment would have washed onto the shore and started rising, burying all of the creatures living in the marshes and the lowlands. That was probably the end of a lot of the dinosaurs and amphibious creatures. The water continued to rise until many land mammals in the upper continents could no longer run. But what about the humans? Well, even though sometimes we don't act very intelligently, we're still a lot more reasoning and logical than any animal. Humans obviously don't live down in the swampland, so they would already have been living higher than the pre-flood level, so they've got an advantage. But you can bet that when the water began to rise, they would have climbed as high as they could, floated as long as possible. Maybe they even survived a short while by grabbing onto floating logs or driftwood. But with all of the marine creatures swimming near the surface of the water to get away from those mud layers, there would have been some really large predator animals feeding on bodies. Yeah. When the humans couldn't survive any longer, they would have died and floated on the water surface. Their bones would have scattered as they sank to the bottom of the water, making it hard to find complete human skeletons. And because many of the bones that fell would have landed on top of most of the flood sediment, then fossilization wouldn't take place. Fossilization usually requires rapid burial. Now, one of the most obvious reasons that humans would have survived longer than animals is often overlooked, but it might be the most basic. God gave Noah the instructions on how to build an enclosed ship that would survive the flood. Somehow we get the impression, reading the biblical account, that no one had ever built a canoe or a raft or any floating vessel before the flood. But that's not indicated in the biblical record. I mean, they were highly civilized, and more than likely, they knew how to build small structures that would have floated on lakes like this or bodies of water. So if you started to see the waters rise and you'd been listening for years to some man named Noah talk about a great flood, wouldn't you climb on board the nearest boat or even a crudely constructed raft to try to wait out the flood? You know, you might have even lasted for days longer than the animals, maybe more. But the volcanic activity and the tremendous amounts of salt deposition from sediment erosion would have made the seawaters undrinkable. Dehydration would have begun to set in and any small floating boats or rafts, they're starting to capsize as tsunami-like waves wash over the continents. To make the problem of finding human remains even worse, it appears that a lot of the last layers of the flood to be deposited, the top mud layers, those would have been the ones with the majority of the human skeletons. They were washed into the ocean basins as the waters began to recede. In other words, fast moving water swept the very top layers of sediment off to the lowest areas as the water drank, carrying most of the human remains with it. This is confirmed by recent geological research, but very little archaeology has been done underwater to uncover human remains. 
The fact is, we're more resilient and creative in the face of catastrophe than most animals, meaning that we're probably the last to die during a global deluge. Humans would have been in the top layers and many of the human remains were swept away, broken apart or scattered during the flood. That's actually logical. Even most dinosaur remains are also scattered and disarticulated. The majority of human skeletons that we find today are from after the flood, and that's to be expected if the biblical history is correct. But if modern humans have been evolving from ape-like ancestors for the past few million years, well then there's a giant problem. In fact, there is a five billion skeleton problem. There should be at least five billion individuals who have lived and died over that time. And that means that the fossil record should show millions of skeletons of humans and almost human remains. Well, guess what we find? A couple of bags of bones. That's right, a few hundred specimens, mostly incomplete. There's a reason that most evolutionary theorists don't bring up the lack of human fossils. And it's because this truth is powerful evidence that goes against their belief system. There simply hasn't been enough time for evolution to occur. And that should be expected. That's what the Bible told us all along. I'm David Reeves. Truly, the heavens declare the glory of God.